Today we will be discussing about photography basics and the proper techniques. So at the end of the presentation, the student should be able to describe how a camera works, uh, discuss the fundamental terminologies used in photography, apply the different image composition techniques to photography. So, for our lesson presentation, uh, we will be discussing about the workings of a camera, uh, fundamental terminologies in photography, the image composition techniques, uh, short review, uh, and the lesson and activities. So, here we are to watch the workings of a camera, uh, short infographics about it. So, kindly listen and pay attention. I wonder why the photographs look so different to the others. They're in black and white and really faded. That's an interesting question. Wow! You're from the photograph. Who are you? I'm an optical engineer. These photographs are unlike the others because they were captured using older cameras. Really? Why are they different? Well, let's go on a journey back to the 18th century. This is the camera obscura. It's where the word camera came from. It means dark chamber. Let's take a look inside. It sure is very dark in here. Well, that's because the camera is a lightproof box built to capture light. Wow, what's that? That is a daguerreotype camera developed from the camera obscura. It captures images on a silver coated copper plate it was developed in 1839. However, this is the first photographic film camera, and it was invented by Kodak. It uses film strips containing light-sensitive silver halide crystals to capture images and was first introduced in 1888. Hmm, how does a camera work, though? Well, a camera works the same way as your eyes, Alex. The diaphragm of the camera is like the iris of your eye and it determines the amount of light entering the camera. Behind that, there are lenses. Light bends when it travels at different speed through different mediums, such as from air to glass. The light is then focused to a central point. When you click on the shutter button, the movable mirror flips upward in the camera. The light stops when it reaches the film in the camera or the retina in your eye, each forms an inverted image. Why is the image up right when we see it in the camera? It's because there is another light path. When the shutter button is released, the movable mirror returns to its initial position. A pentaprism in the camera rotates the inverted image upright in the viewfinder. Even more amazing is when the image reaches the retina in our eyes, our brains process it to appear upright. Oh, so that's how the camera works. I have another question. What about digital cameras? Good question. As camera technology evolved, the way images were stored changed too. Photographic film strips were replaced with electronic film, giving birth to the digital camera era. Instead of using chemicals to react with light to form permanent patterns, electronic film picks up colors on a light reactive surface and converts them into electric signals. These electric signals can then be translated by a computer into an image that can be displayed on any type of screen, like a computer screen or a TV. This is different than the old film strips, which could only be printed on paper. These digital images can be stored, shared, or deleted from the memory card at any time. Want to know more about cameras? Absolutely, yes! Amazingly, cameras can detect all types of light, both visible and invisible. Light is actually a wave of energy called electromagnetic radiation. Cameras can be designed to detect these waves at all different sizes. Really? Like what? Like thermal cameras. Thermal cameras can detect longer electromagnetic waves, which are created by hot objects. Therefore, a thermal camera can capture and display the temperature of each object in its picture. 
However, X-ray cameras detect special electromagnetic waves that are very short and wiggle very fast, allowing us to see bone structures and also to see through walls. But these are only two examples. There are many, many more. Wow, all that evolved from the first camera? That is so cool! Oh, and Alex, happy snapping. So that it, uh, that is for the uh, working of a camera. So actually, it derives its inspiration in uh, its construction into our eye. So for the fundamental terminologies in photography, here were a big list of fundamental terminologies pertaining photography. We have actually seven listed here. Uh, number one, exposure, uh, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, focus, white balance, and uh, lenses. So for the exposure, so it is a total density of the light allowed to fall on the film or the sensor in a camera. So we have here um, uh, two main categories, which is overexposure and underexposure. Under overexposure, we have a loss of detail in highlights, which is completely white and very bright. And if the camera or the photo is under exposure uh, we have a loss of necessary detail in darker areas we have insufficient brightness it goes completely black no? so as you can see here in the image uh, this is an example image of an overexposed uh, picture and here is an underexposed uh, picture so it goes back black and it goes white actually no? so you need to consider the proper exposure in your uh, photos so the next one is shutter speed so it is a term used uh, for the time interval for which the shutter of the camera is open so uh, actually a long shutter speed uh, might often add in a blur due to camera shake however it can be put to use creatively to obtain uh, varied effects so here the camera speed or the shutter speed is actually fast here and then as you can see the sharpness of the image is being observed and then for this example so somehow the uh, shutter speed here is uh, slow so you can see a blurry image however it adds on the effect of the photo itself so depending on your uh, application or your uh, your subject so that will depend on your shutter speed the next one is aperture so aperture is actually the lens diagram opening inside the photographic lens which is referred to as aperture so actually this regulates the amount of light entering through the lens and eventually falling onto the sensor the aperture is denoted by f numbers or f stops it also works more like and the iris of the eye and determines the effective diameter of the lens opening so it regulates the amount of light so uh, the lower the f number uh, the higher is the amount of light entering and vice versa so as shown here in the image so f over 1.4 the large uh, the larger it can uh, accept light and then similarly f over 8 uh, the smaller it can accept light in it so depending on your application um actually the aperture is actually dependent, of course, of the depth of field and actually on the on the depth of field, no, itself. So the lower the f number, the higher is the amount of light that it enters, no. So it gives specific depth of field to the image. So when we say depth of field, it is the distance between the nearest and the farthest point in a scene. So the depth of field increases as f number increases and goes on so as you can see here f slash of 32 so the farthest image is actually not um, somehow clear compared to f uh, over 5.6 no? so the depth of play, uh, field plays a major role in isolating the subject in an image by blurring out the background so if you want a blurry background in your photo uh, photographs so you can choose a lower a lower aperture ratio
So, the larger depth of field is good for landscapes and architectural applications. So, for a mountain areas, for rivers, for gardens, so you could uh, choose a higher uh, aperture for that. No? I choose a higher aperture setting for your camera. And then, let's proceed to ISO. So, ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. So, it's uh, specifies a standard value of sensitivity of the sensor of the camera to light. So higher ISO, uh, the more e e is it sensitivity. So and vice versa. So higher ISOs often to tend to render noise in an image. So just as shown in this uh, example image. So as you can see here, higher ISO tends to um, have a more blurry capturing of the image so the meter here we cannot actually read and then uh, lower ISO such as this one ISO 80 it has a clearer image and it so choose a higher ISO in your photographs or, or, or rather choose a lower ISO number such as this one so ISO 80 so focus uh, only a certain range of image uh, can be obtained with acceptable sharpness in the image captured so this range needs to be set accurately and is called focusing so this is the focus points or some on, on the setting of the camera and then as you can see here the leaf no? so here is the focus points and then the other background is actually blurred in order for us to uh, uh, to set uh, subject on our photos no? and uh, another terminology is the white balance so it is a process of removing the unrealistic color cast uh, which which so that the image which appear white uh, appear white to the human eye and rendered white in the photograph too so uh, white balance is actually important because uh, in a photograph we can we tend to see different uh, white lights for example in an incandescent light so if you shot uh, an incandescent light it is somehow yellowish and for in the for fire it is somehow red uh, yellow for tube light bluish and the sun is actually white so we want um, white uh, should appear white in the, to the human eye and, so, and also to the photograph. So here is the uh, color temperature scale, te um, temperature scale in Kelvin. So uh, the blue, blue one is called clue, uh, cool and the red one is called uh, warming. So here is the setting in order for us to uh, maintain the white balance. No? So daylight, it adds uh, warm tones, cloudy, uh, camera adds warm tones, uh, if it is shady, uh, camera adds warm tones also, uh, camera is a tungsten camera, so adds cool tones, fluorescent, red tones, etc. Here, here is an example of a uh, warm image, no? and here is an example of a cool image, so uh, somehow reddish and uh, uh, bluish in uh, background. So lenses, so lenses, uh, is a, cam a camera lens is an optical lens or assembly of lenses used in conjunction with a camera body and mechanism to make images of objects, either on photographic film or on other uh, media capable of storing an image chemically or electronically. So lenses actually make images of the object. So we have here a uh, ultra wide view lens, so which actually provides greater depth of field. So the wide uh, angle allows you to bring more area into focus. So the zoom range allow us to make a small adjustment to the coverage of your shot uh, for more creative control. Now, so if you uh, want a more depth of field, uh, fill so use an ultra wide view lens so here are some examples of ultra wide view lens no? and the primes uh, lenses so single focal length highly sharp so handy for portrait and macro photography so when we say macro photography it is a photography in close up so if you want a close up or a small subject so use a prime lens onto it so here are some example of prime lenses for portrait in the close-up photography and super tele 
telephoto lenses, so high focal lens, sharp. So used for wildlife and sports uh, photography. So here are some examples of super telephoto lenses. So if you want uh, to shot uh, uh, an image or a photo into a racetrack or if your subject is far away from you, so you should use a super telephoto lenses on it. And telephoto zoom lenses. So telephoto zoom lenses allows you to capture details normally missed by the eye. So capture the far off uh, action of a fast paced sports or zoom in for an intimate portrait with blurred uh, background. So basically, if you cannot capture it by your eyes and is, it is fast enough, so use a telephoto zoom lens. Here are some example of the lenses. So let's proceed to the image composition techniques. So image composition actually describes how different subjects and visual elements are arranged inside of the image frame. So the whole point of this is to make the image more compelling, give prominence to the subject and invoke interest in the viewer. We have the here three major image composition techniques, the rule of thirds, backgrounds and depths, and a point of views. So the rule of thirds is actually based on the fact the human eye is naturally drawn to a point about two-thirds uh, up to a page. So, with this in mind, so you should crop your photo actually uh, so that the main subject are located around the intersection points on, of these grid lines rather than on the center. So, kindly locate your subject around this uh, intersection uh, point of the grid similarly with this uh, one and then similarly with this one. So actually, uh, law of nature, it is based on the golden section that we have discussed on our past lesson and um, the Fibonacci series. No? So backgrounds and depth. So uh, keep in mind too that background is also important. So a neat blurred out uh, background is good for birds and macros, so close up features. No? So, however, it, uh, it's good to have quite focus in case of landscape. Um, kindly consider also your backgrounds and depth. For example, if you are using or um, the subject is actually an animal or um, a rain, close-up image, etc. So, use a blurred background into it. And then, if the landscape or architectural um, is, is um, escapade, um gardens, so use a... Uh, clearer no clearer image into it so point of point of view avoid cliche or uh, overuse point of use so for when shooting so experiment no get down and try to get low angled shot this gives a completely new feel to the image uh, to the image so here you can see a sample image of a uh, change in point of view so we have the uh, low angled shot here um, on paris and a boat no so also keep out uh, for actions, moments, and uh, be quick. So an example of action is a uh, man um, on going to a dunk. No? And then similarly, uh, in action with this uh, figure on the right is uh, a fish actually standing. No? So look out for actions, moments, and uh, just be quick on it. Uh, on capturing the moments and of course uh, get closed no so nature has a beautiful detail which you might uh, uh, wa not m want to miss so in the left side so you can see a beautiful uh, photograph of a uh, water droplets and then here uh, macro photography on a lady blog uh, on a ladybug um, on on the verge of flying no and for the image composition, also observe the light and golden light. Uh, this will change the feel of the picture. No? So golden light and of course the background is important. And of course always uh, candid, uh, candid pose. So candid is an um, informal and without the knowledge of the subject itself. So candid pose is actually... Uh, important in your photography since uh, the look for people and the action. So they might uh, be funny and smiles and best when captured naturally. So candid chat is a natural uh, way on in photography. No? And uh, what you do before you click, number one is actually frame the subject, zoom in, compose the frames, uh, apply the image composition techniques that we have the learned, Get it in focus, set the exposure, then click. No?
So, we're learning objective met. So, we have discussed photography basics. Thirds, uh, background of depths, point of view, looking out for actions, getting close to nature, observing golden lights, and candid pose, photography techniques to your photographs. So capture photos for each. So you will have the in your lesson and activities seven photographs in total. No. So our next topic is learning graphics design, a text and image using Adobe Photoshop software. 
and then after that illustrator and so on so that formally ends our discussion for the day thank you and have a good day